What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the, of the Behind the Wheel podcast. I'm Scott. This is Rich. We're here. We're doing it again. So listen, so let's get right into it. I want to talk about this manual car thing. Mm -hmm. It's very, very, very interesting. Yeah, manual cars are cool. No, no, no. Yeah, of course they're cool. But what I mean <laughs> is like, what's interesting is um, I think that... We're starting to see a resurgence of people that want to drive manual cars, mm -hmm. right? And I think some of the data supports that. I think we increased from like a like a one percent of of cars um, or something like that to a two percent yep. of cars that are that are being purchased in manual. So I, we've in, we've doubled. Yeah. I think that was I think that was over like a two year span though, but still, but from, right, yeah, from twenty twenty one to twenty three, I think it's like doubled something like that. The one thing I think I would like to know is I would love to know if the amount of car offerings with manual have increased. That part I I don't know that I I've I want to say probably not. I I don't believe there's any five speed sold anymore. Is that true? No, you got me stumped. Yeah. It would make sense though. Yeah. Be, I mean, unless it's a really low power car. Like I met you if you got something like a smart car. There, there's a Chevy model that was like the last of the five speeds. I can't remember what it was. Uh, one of those small Chevy. What are they called? I don't even know. Model. Like a Veo, a Spark, a Spark something. maybe. Yeah, Spark's not an EV. It just it sounds like an EV. It might have been <laughs> the Spark. <laughs> so I what what I think is interesting is like Spark, you, you're starting to see yeah you're starting to see a lot of these cars now that are available in 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 manual. Um, what's interesting to me and and this is something that I thought was interesting that Max dug up, which was in Europe, like. All right, so we're, I think, what, our total vehicles sold are like 2% 2 or 2.8%. Yeah, of American sales and manual. Or manual. So let let, right? let let the people guess on what Europe has. Yeah, take take a moment to yourself. Yeah. Let it let it sink in. Guess how many, guess the percentage, and, and it's going to be a wide swing, but guess the percentage of cars that are manual in Europe. Go ahead, let it resonate. Mm -hmm. Let it sink in. How about how, my initial guess? Which right. I know the answer. Which is initial yeah. guess. My, I, I know the answer, but my initial guess would have been like somewhere in the ballpark of maybe twenty five percent. Okay, that's a fair. That's a fair assumption. So yeah. the research we pulled, mm -hmm. have your answer ready, <laughs> is that something in the excess of fifty five to eighty percent mm -hmm. of all cars driven in Europe are manual. Yeah. And again, going on to that, just three percent of the cars in the US roughly right that are driven manual. So 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 let's let's quickly get into why we think this is. I, I first off, you know, I, there's been a study which which you know Max had pointed out. So so we'll talk about that in a sec which is kind of in it's kind of entertaining all in itself. Mm -hmm. Um but you know, I think in Europe there's there's been a a, a more consistent use of the manual transmission the entire time yep right i think there's a, a level of driver there i also think that there's a level of economy that they use a lot of their cars especially the smaller cars mm -hmm. uh overseas that the united states doesn't really have well when i think about it i mean they also have smaller roads right yeah so they have tiny roads tiny cars and their tiny cars are i would imagine inexpensive Right, so, so you so we're just saying tiny cars. You want tiny gear sets? I don't know. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I, typically, a lot of cars when you get a, a if there's a manual and an automatic option, typically the automatic costs more, right? It's normally more yeah, premium but, price. I mean, like at least here in the states, I mean that it's what it's like five hundred dollars more, eight hundred dollars. It's, it's more. normally like a like a like a thousand bucks or something. Okay, yeah. I mean, you know, I I think look. The United States had is, and, and I say this, you know, kind of being one of them, is mm -hmm. a different breed in the sense that they're more occupied. Yep. They're lazier. <laughs> they're, uh, you know, they're they're more comfort and creature feature oriented than I think many other cultures are. And and it's interesting because when you start to think about the vehicles that are offered here, even entry level vehicles, you know, let's say the Chevy Sparks and stuff like mm -hmm. that, they have more creature comforts than you'd find in a lot of cars. Yeah. You know, they're coming. Think about it. When was the last time you got into a car that didn't have Bluetooth technology, that didn't have power everything, that didn't have, 
You know, I mean, it's very, very like you're not gonna, unless you look for an older car, you're not going to find too many newer cars that don't have all those features built in. Oh yeah, they're definitely going to have that at right. very least. Yeah. And so I don't know that you know some of these uh, convenience features and creature comforts are built into a lot of the other vehicles that are owned. And plus, I think there's some areas, especially in Europe. I mean, like if you go into like Slovakia or something, I, you know, mm -hmm. I, again, I'm completely uninformed, so don't don't beat me up here. But um, I think that there's a higher level of just transportation needed not really worried about their long commutes or whatever right. it may be yeah you know um i think I, also something to do with offerings i'm sure that the you know all those companies are not here in america yep. that have options of small little micro cars or whatever you want to call those things i'm sure that they have lots of offer offerings yeah. with a standard you know yeah with a standard gearbox and just <laughs> I don't know, but uh, <laughs> this this is this is funny. So one of the <laughs> one of the things says, uh, automatics are much more unitelar. Un you can you help me here? I don't even know where you're reading. <laughs> it's it's the top. Uh, oh, you, uh, utilitarian. Utilitarian. Thank you. Yes. Uh, cars. Uh, they get people from point A to point B. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure. I know this source is a valid source, but one of the things that they say, or that this person says is that Americans eat while they drive and they multitask while they drive, right? Mm. So Europeans do not. So this brings up a whole other, <laughs> we, I think, yep. I think that we might have just stumbled onto something that NHTSA and DOT may want to pay attention to. You don't have to make all these different laws for using your cell phone and all these different things mm -hmm. while you're driving. Yep. Preoccupied driving can be fixed right here right now here's how you fix it you make every car a manual yep <laughs> and you will have no choice but to not be on your phone because it's very very difficult to operate a car and but listen all you internet heroes that are about to just get on me and say i drive my car manual and i use my phone right text well all right listen that's <laughs> yeah we're talking about the broad scheme a uh, scheme of people i drive manual and i can properly do it to an extent but th listen if you have one hand on the wheel and your other hand is texting, at some point you do have to move your hand over to mm -hmm. the stick yep. to go into another gear. Correct. So, like, you know, just saying. Yeah. Um, could be an easy solve. Could be a really easy solve. Do, do you eat in your car? I don't. I, I figured so. The only time that I think I would – well, first off, all right, in my, in my Z, never, never, right, right. never. I'll, I'll hang out the window while I'm driving mm -hmm. before I would eat in my car. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in, in, uh, in like my everyday driver, like, you know, I have like an Atlas, you know, mm -hmm. that I drive every day with the kids and stuff. Um, I guess I don't really plan to eat meals in the car, but if I guess if like, let's say we're on a road trip, I will, but I, I don't like that. Yeah. You know, like, first off, like, it's a hot stinking mess trying to eat yep. anything, unless you're eating, like, nuggets and fries. By the way, that is the reason that I believe chicken nuggets were invented. To, as a to-go food? Yeah. Okay. Right? Yeah, I mean, I yeah, if that's the only reason, then <laughs> we really got a good product out of that. I, I don't think that was the only reason. I'm pretty sure that I've watched the McDonald's documentary before, and um, and that is not what they were looking for. But, but I do think that there are some foods that lend themselves. Like, listen, you can't. You can't properly get Taco Bell and eat it in your car. I feel like that's one of the ones that you can. No, it's not because well, it it's too many can. loose items. If you get a Mexican pizza, I get, it's not going to work. Right, but not going to work. If you, get a, if you get a little burrito. All right, burrito. burrito. Right, but burrito right. is held together by its own binding yep. self. But if you get like one of those Taco Supremes, yeah, that's going you open it up, there's lettuce and there's cheese flying all over the place. Yeah. It's disgusting. Yeah. Yeah. And then the worst part is that stuff, you can't get that stuff out of the car. I don't get it. I don't eat in my car, and right. I don't think I ever have. Right. Uh, and even when I was growing up, if my parents took my family like in a in a minivan or something, we mm. were not really the eat in the car type of people. Yeah. It just wasn't wasn't that way. But uh, right. People who eat in their car freak me out. Really? That's so gross. <laughs> Why? Why is it gross? You just said like, like no. Well, the, all right. The cheese in the cracks, and then it stays yeah. there for a couple of years, and then. Yeah. Oh man. I, I don't now know. with that, I have kids, and if you ever look at the back seat of my car, and I clean it pretty frequently like i have a whole vacuum set up just to Ugh. clean their muck I, but I'm, I'm the guy when if i if i'm going out to eat with my friends and we go to a fast food place or something and they walk out with a soda in their hand i'm like i'm like you're you're crazy if you think that's coming in my car oh the soda yeah that's why like, not the soda though you have cup holders well spills happen i mean i guess they do but I mean, look at this guy 
Yeah, no. I he's having know. he's having a whole uh, sit down meal there. I don't know. I my, I, my fr- if my friends watch this and they yeah. heard me say this, he'd be like, yeah, he says this all the time. Yeah. Like I would be like, I did not spend X amount of money for you to screw my car up. <laughs> All right, that's fair. You know? But but so let me let me ask you a question. So eighty wait wait eating while driving causes eighty percent of all car accidents. That's what? that's crazy. Well, this is from two thousand nine. That you can't. This yeah. is not valid anymore. That's yeah, not valid anymore. Two thousand nine is before the the cell phone height mm-hmm. really grabbed onto people. But here's what I will say: this is that I think that I don't want to say like eating, but distractions. Yeah, like. Uh, I think a lot of this just comes down to Americans tend, I believe, and I, and I don't know the data on this, but I would guess that if you looked at the data versus, from Europe versus, uh, versus America, I would say that the average American commute is longer yep. than, than the commute um, is in Europe. Right. My guess. I, oh, I think I think for where we live in New York, yeah. I'm pretty sure the average commuter uh, does it's like 22 miles or something like that, right? Well, I, I know annually. Annually, I know it's something around like 15,000. Okay. All right. Yeah. I mean, that's so. that's that's got to be around. You know, it's got to be a little bit over that. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, but I I would say that there's a good chance that the American commute is longer, mm-hmm. and because of that, we've adjusted to thinking that. We should do more. Well, you know what, too? I would even venture to say that the American priority list of kind of what they do as far as, um, for example, I bet you if you look at the Italian culture in general, there are less on the go type people. I would bet that they I make priority I mean, for you're walking a fine line with that. But listen, listen. Out a whole country. <laughs> no, but listen. But what I'm saying is, like, I'm saying, like, like, let's say Greece and it and Italy, and so mm-hmm. I believe that they still have a cult. Not everybody, but I mm-hmm. believe that on, on a whole, their culture still values having meals, and their culture still values having more of a work life balance. Mm-hmm. My my guess from the things I've heard, right? Ooh, this is interesting. Well, isn't, isn't twenty five minutes? Oh, it's like same thing. Isn't France the like the whole same thing? Balance place? Look, everybody. Yeah, like every. It seems like it seems like uh, seems like I was wrong with that. So what the so um, yeah, our commutes are probably pretty similar. Um, but like I, I would say dis- that's not distance. That's that's, that's time. minutes, right? That's, that's true. Yeah, that's true. It might it might take them ten minutes to go a mile. Right. Yeah. Right. So no, you're... I don't. I bet. You, well, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't. I've never been to Europe. Yeah, that me either. No. But I've heard. But I've heard a lot of things. I know a lot of people from Europe. So like, I think that when I think about this whole thing, I think like, like I always hear that they they value their meals. That they stop. You know, everybody mm-hmm. stops to eat their meal and stuff. Whereas Americans are are jamming. Over the course of just a week, yeah. So, so Americans' average commute time is about an hour, each an hour hour a day, which is twenty five minutes each way. Anyhow, but like I think like Americans have developed a very on the go culture. Yep. Right. So, so the ability to eat in a car. I mean, you know, drive throughs, fast food, all these different things. They're they're you know primarily used to eat on the go. Yeah. And I don't, I don't know that um, there's not a country, there's not a culture that really does a better job at us at prioritizing that. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? I mean, I think it's a terrible thing. Yeah, right. Like, I mean, like I'm very much, even though I don't, like I don't, it's one of those things like say, uh, uh, don't do as I say, say as the I do. do, yep. yep. Um, but, but like I'm very much the opposite. Like I don't, I don't have any work-life balance pretty much anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, you know, I, I greatly believe in it, yep. which is hard cause you know, but, but I also think that, um, you know, the culture that we have here, especially in the States doesn't really support it. Yeah. You know, um, and I imagine there's similar cultures like that. Like I think the Asian culture is probably the similar way. Definitely. There, you know, mm-hmm. um, but, but it's very, but it's very difficult for me to think like, I, I really do wish that you know like i heard like about greece and different things and they prioritize meals like they stop the country basically (laughs) shuts down in the middle of the day for lunch 
I don't know if Greece is really even up and running to shut down. That's fair. <laughs> That's fair. Sorry, Greece. Yeah. By the way, I like your salads. Was that that was that was bad, right? That's no, okay. All right, I do. I like your salads. I think they they're the best of the salad. In world. case in case Greece is watching. In case Greece is watching. Yeah. Viva la salad. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I think I think the manual thing is interesting. There's still a lot of cars that have now come out and I think performance cars and there's listen there is a piece of this whole puzzle it, it's only performance cars now which is funny yeah well no I don't think it's funny I think that there's a great bunch of people like us that are car enthusiasts that are yearning to have that driving experience well, I, I think it shows that the only people buying a stick in the United States are enthusiasts right they, well like well that know. would make sense because you know what I've heard the number mm-hmm. I've heard the number that roughly three percent of all car owners are consider themselves an enthusiast, and that fits in line with the manual, doesn't owners. it? Yeah. yeah. So that's uh that's pretty that's pretty actually interesting statistic. But um, w- you know what about like so some cars that are no longer uh available to stick like um yeah I, I think I think Mini Cooper cut cut off a few models. Okay. Um, I'm pretty sure the base Civic is no longer stick. You can only get the Touring SI Type R, those three. Yeah. I mean, listen, there's cars that still upset me. Like, I believe, if I'm correct, that, like, uh, a new GT3 RS, you can only get it in the PDK transmission. You mm. can't get uh, a manual gearbox. Oh, like the, well, Kia dropped the ball, not offering the Stinger GT2 in a stick. Well, they that, don't sell enough cars for them to really drop the ball that far. They, that car is so cool. They should have put that a stick I'm, in that damn I'm, car. Listen, I'm not. That's not my debate. My debate is just that I don't think they sell enough of them that it really is going to hurt them all that bad. But I mean, you, all right, that car, like you don't hear a lot of enthusiasts talk about the Stinger. But like, if I think oh, let's take a Max. This is a good. This is a good one. No good. stick. Yeah. Leave, leave this up. Go. Go. All right. So st- uh, yeah, go to the first one. Go to the first one. Um, go ahead. Sorry, finish your thought. No, nothing. Just like the, the, that's a really cool car. I think enthusiasts would have really liked it when they realized that that thing is just a like a brick shit house of super fast all wheel drive sports car and they didn't offer a stick in it. I don't know, but yeah, I mean, uh, I, I get, I get what you're saying. I'm they just, should've. I'm just saying like, man, I wish they had done a better job on the rear end of that car. The Anyhow. Stinger? Yeah. It's cool. I don't like the rear. That's where we disagree. I think, I think the whole car looks great. The front's cool. The, all the right. ugliest thing on that car is the Kia badge. I'm not even joking. That's not even like a shot at them. It's literally just the ugliest thing on the car. You like car. that new Kia logo? Uh, do you see the article that says uh, how many people per day Google K N car brand. They can't, <laughs> they can't read it out as Kia. Yeah. Is that hilarious? Yeah, Wait, Max, I want to see the article. That was good. So, so yeah, that that was article was, um, no, oh, he, no, the no the uh, the one that you had before though. But yeah, so yeah, people were googling K N. I know, I know, I get it. But let's let's go back to the other article. So this was no, not this one. The uh, the the cars that should have been offered. Max is shuffling two articles. Okay. Oh, there we go. Yeah. All right. So these are thirteen cars that didn't offer stick for some reason, and twelve of them that did. Well, let's go to the ones that don't. I bet just stingers on here. Maybe not. All right. So Nissan GTR now uh, haven't oh. haven't offered it since the, since the R thirty five came out. Right. That's the elephant in the room. You think so? <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, it's totally. it's it's discouraging. <laughs> a little bit, but I also th- I'm right. Yeah. Yeah, totally. All right. It should have. There you go. GTS, yeah. Yep. 911. Um uh, you know, I, I think that these cars are so darn set up to encompass the driving experience that I think not having that gear select not having an option to have a manual. You know, I think this is saying it does have a stick. What? Am I wrong? It's no. a it's a stick. Oh no, stick! I see no what they're stick. doing there. Yeah, all right. stick, no stick. So, all right, so so I think Porsche gets it. I actually I didn't know that I was offered it. Well, no th- stick. I feel like this is obvious. Isn't Mercedes. Yeah, not, Mercedes. They're, they're not you kind of ships. expect. Yeah. yeah, you kind of expect that. Stick. Zero yeah, one. zero one. We get that. This that's cool. cool. That's a stick. There you go. No stick. Not yeah. Not eleven turbo. So like what that's. Are, so what does Porsche offer right now? It's a PDK transmission, I believe. Um, hmm. And so so yeah. Listen, and I and I've driven the uh, the PDK trans. Um, it is crap. It does 2.906. So, and here's the thing. It's a freaking rocket I've driven a PDK trans and I have nothing bad to say about it. It shifts hard and fast and the ability to use the paddles are there. And the truth is the car is legit. So here's a question that's something I've always wondered just in car world stuff. Yeah. When when Porsche has a technology like that with their PDK transmission or whatever Mm -hmm. you want to call it, 
And as this ages on, will this transmission find its way into, say, Audis? And then down the ladder? Um, I mean, look, I, I think that there's already a variation of really good automatic transmissions. And um, and I say variations because there's obviously dual clutch technologies. There's a bunch of different technologies. Um, um, maybe. I mean, uh, yeah. you know, three, I mean, three years from now, does this make its way into an S4? I'm not even sure that some of these transmissions in some capacity are not in already already oh, okay um but but yeah so i mean but i still i still think that even driving like you know like i i, I was driving a gt3 or rs you know uh i don't know maybe uh six months ago or whatever and it's a pvk transmission it's great hmm. car's great um you can still use the paddles and feel like you're not disconnected but but there is something about having a like a manual transmission right the next car on the list is something that i'm kind of really growing to which is weird for me. It's very no. It's a cool. It's a cool car. Really out of character for me. ZL, the ZL one is is a cool car. Um, and yeah, it makes sense that they have stick. The, the American like this is they're very much of American rooted and the guy that's going to buy that car. Yeah, who wants a stick? Yeah, I know. But what like, else we got? With, with the knowing that those are no going to discontinued. No stick. Yeah, because Ferrari. You kind of. Yeah. Yeah, kind of expected. Yeah, like, super no, car. No stick. The, it doesn't say stick or not stick. So. Um, no, I, I don't even want to look at this car, to be honest with you. All right, no stick. All right, well, this is... <sighs> when was the last year it was offered in a stick? Like, 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 a, like a 2006? I don't were, know. Were those offered in a stick? Yeah. They were, right? Yeah. I, I think. So. Uh, so it's a bit of a letdown. I don't know if it... You know, here's the thing. It, I mean, if you're going to compete in a supercar world, mm -hmm. you got to be able to make cars that can deliver the results. And the truth is, the PDKs and some of the... Automatic. The fastest, you know, automatics, they're faster. Yep. So, like, I think when you get into some of these exotics, that's why that happens. Yeah. I mean, all right. Th this auto m must be old if it has this one. It has the yeah. Old, the old 86. Yeah. All right. It's, it's, a, it's, it's a hybrid, so it's to be expected. Yeah. I'm concerned that this, like you said, so this is this, an old so, article. So, this is, a, this is a fun one here. The Golf R is no longer available in a stick in Europe only available manual transmission in the states right so how do you interpret that well i mean maybe they've started to eat gelato on the move i i think it's that people value the dct and the automatics out there and they're just like this is just way cooler it's you know, faster is it that or is it a whole generation of people that are starting to come up without having the skill level to drive a manual car in europe well, I'm just saying in general, like there's a, there is a, there is a level of, uh, you know, kind of societal change that's happening, right? Like you would say that, like, I would say, especially like here, uh, you know, in, in more urban settings mm -hmm. that, you know, people, there's a lot of kids that don't have any really value in getting their license. They'd rather just take an Uber. And yeah. I think if you, if you, if you take that to kind of a less intense level, you're going to have people that want to drive a car, but they just want to drive a car. They don't yep. want to learn how to do another skill. Yeah, but then so but but then riddle me this. If you're in Europe <laughs> and and most of Europeans drive a stick according to 80% of sales, right? And they don't offer a high performance golf R and a stick shift to them. You guys drive stick, but you don't get the stick. No one drives stick in America, but they say you guys don't drive stick, but you guys get the stick. So what you're saying is they get the, sh they don't get the stick, they get the shaft. <laughs> <laughs> I guess, but wh wh why is that? It's uh, you know, folks might had to say something to the American market by saying you guys actually buy this. I don't get it. Well, the question I would have to you is, is that, and I don't, I don't know this. They offer a manual transmission here in the states. Yes. Yes. I don't know. Yeah, I, really? I don't know. I don't know that I know. I, I would imagine it has something to do with more of a cost global global type thing, but I, I I don't I don't know the answer to that. Yeah, the the golf R, the new market golf R is only available in the stick, only in the states. You know, and the only other thing I could think of is that maybe the emission standards are changing that. Maybe that could be it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um. So there's that. Put up. Let's do the let's do the article of the cars that are available yeah. today. So a 2023 car and driver. Um, Cars are still available with a manual transmission. Uh, Acura Integra. I think I think Max will pull it up. Yeah, well, I can. I mean, I can still go through yeah. it while he does. So Acura Integra, uh, they offer a six-speed. Makes sense. Uh, BMW M2, BMW M3, mm -hmm. BMW M4. You see a pattern here? Yeah. Oh, this one I didn't know. The yeah. the CT4, the the, the Cadillac so CT4 cool. Blackwing. So cool. This is a great car. Mm -hmm. Uh. 
Kyle Cross is one of these cars. You know, the uh, also for the first one, the list Acura Integra, the, also the Type S is confirmed six speed. Mm. So that's cool. Yeah. Um, oh, C- CT5 and mm-hmm. Blackwing. Man, this is a, these are great cars. Yes, they are. They don't ever really get called. I mean, you know, they're expensive, but 668 horsepower in this thing. Dude, I might find myself in a Camaro one day, which is crazy. Oh, I don't really like it. It's crazy. No, I, I, you know, of the American muscle cars, I kind of... For God's sakes, would some of these car companies stop putting two liter turbo car, a two liter two liter turbo motors into some of these cars? Why? Drive me nuts. What, you want you want to go back to V8s? No, but even if you don't, like do a three liter. For God's sake, two liter turbo four cylinder. Do like a three liter six cylinder twin turbo, something like you yeah, know. They do do that. It's still fairly two liter common. two liter turbo. It's so wimpy. Civic Si, which is awesome. They still made that. Dodge Challenger. Oh, we're we're off uh we Yeah, go. Dodge okay. Challenger. Yep. Um Ford Mustang. Which you will not see me in a Challenger or a Mustang. That's yeah, me either. Yeah. I'm I'm with that. Neither of those. Um Honda Civic, which is cool. Jim's got one. Mm-hmm. Uh Elantra N, one yep. of your favorites. This, I, I, didn't even, I didn't even know the Kia Forte was still made. Well, hold on a second. Elantra. Elantra has uh whatever, but but they the turbocharged Elantra N line discontinued its manual transmission. The N line versus the N. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, but an N performance model still does have it. I Kia even, Forte. I had no idea the Kia Forte was still made. <laughs> I had no idea. All right, we're moving that's, on. That's news to me. Um, Mazda three, which I had. You know, when you look at the Mazda three from this angle, doesn't it remind you a little bit of the the BMW shoebox? The clown, the clown shoe. I mean. Well, look, I had this exact car. The one on the screen, I had that color, trim, everything. Okay, so, so I had that car. But doesn't that remind you a little bit of the BMW clown shoe? Uh, that was the Z3M. I all right. So the shape, just the shape yeah. The shape is bit. funny, but you know, the, you know what they say about this car? The, they said that they, they didn't give it any hard body lines, so it made it look rather futuristic. Like a, yeah, like a mush, it, marshmallow. It, yeah, it made it look kind of like alienistic, futuristic, and I kind of love the fact that it was like a pseudo wagon. So. That's and it's I good because it. like people can't properly get a good hold when they're leaning on your car, <laughs> so they like put it their was, hand on it and slip off. It was a good car. It was just boring. I understand. Yeah, nothing a few hundred horsepower won't fix. On that car, that thing slows molasses. But, uh, um, Mazda Miata. Yep. All right. We, yeah, we know. You, you said can't take Mazda that away. Said the Miata will. They're never gonna get rid of the Miata. Is what they said. Good. Yeah. They shouldn't. That's awesome. Yeah. They should, listen, I like to see that stuff. Yeah. Uh, mini hard top and convertible. Way to go, Mini. Yeah. Killing it. Clubman. <laughs> that one, I think, should come Die. in a manual. But so, oh, so this is, I think this is the other five-speed. Versa. Option. It is five-speed, see? Yeah. So Versa and Spark are the last two five-speeds. I think this has everything to do with the fact that it's cost. But oh, yeah. Um, there, there's the your, Z. There's your three-liter V6 pl- turbo. Bravo to Nissan for continuing a heritage of actual well driving cars um so now that they have that that platform with a stick do you think they could bring a stick into a q60 they won't is that does that suck well i don't know i guess it depends you know if you'd rather have the z or a g you know uh, a q60 model i mean you could yeah i guess <laughs> oh my god where am i f- i love this car mm-hmm. this is oh my god such a good car um Porsche Cayman GT4 RS. How much more of those go mm. for? New. I don't know no what. No markup. Like 130? Is that right? I don't know. 140? I would, I would imagine, yeah, 149,000. That's only 130 above my price range. <laughs> 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 yeah, Porsche 911 still so has a uh, good old stick there. BRZ. Yep. Subaru Impreza. You know, I haven't seen a new BRZ on the road yet. Still haven't even seen one. Really? I've only seen the GR86s. Mm. Yeah, there's my car. Subaru WRX. Yep. GR Corolla, which nobody can get. Yep. GR86. GR86. Which I see plenty of. Right. And the Supra, which the is Supra. really cool. So the Supra. And then that was, a, that was a... Listen, I will say, that was a quick, 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 on their feet thinking to feedback mm-hmm. from a pretty big company. Yep. You know what I mean? Like... like Toyota, when they rolled out the the Supra, they had nothing but complaints about it not being a manual. And mm-hmm. just soon after, a couple, you know, a year or two, yep. they rolled it right out. So is but the Z4 is not available on the stick. 
No, I don't think so. So, like, will that happen? I doubt it. That sucks. I, should I doubt do that. it. <laughs> I mean, I don't. I don't know, but golf. Well, I don't. There's no golf anymore in the states. I think it's just GTI. Yeah, it's either GTI or it's going to be the Golf R. But right, because there's, no, there's no regular golfs anymore. And then you still get the Jetta GLI. Yep. Pretty cool. That's a really solid car. It'd probably be a really good. Uh, well, and also driver. it looks like Jetta, Jetta, in the S or the Sport form. Oh, in so, addition. You, so you can get a, a regular. Jetta. Yeah. Wait, so Ford Bronco's not on this list. Speaking of, but Wait, I, is that available in manual? Yeah, it is. But I guess. Oh, here's every oh. manual crossover. I oh, don't so, know. so, so I mean, it's only look. two. It's only the Cross Track and the Bronco. Yeah. Cool. Well, at least that's the two that are showing. I don't know. I think I think the manual thing. I think it's from a car person. You know, like when I get into the car that I want to drive on a weekend, mm -hmm. I want I want I want the manual. Yeah, I, I understand that. Like that, a, you can develop a you know some sort of automatic or a PDK or something like that, or you know dual clutch transmission that it shifts faster. Mm -hmm. I I get it, but I want the manual. Yep. I want that stupid third pedal. Well, what do I do with my foot? <laughs> <laughs> who <laughs> I don't know what to do with my hands. Um, but uh, if you if you care about the time of shifting so much, I mean, where are you driving that? It really matters that seconds count. I don't know. The, the whole reason I haven't built an engine for my car is because well, I can't really raise the power that much. Where am I going? Yeah. It's just it's purposely not usable. Yeah, so I don't know. I mean, I think if you have the option or you know how to drive a stick or want to drive a stick, I think you should. Yeah. And also, I think you should, you know, make sure that everything you buy is in manual. This mm -hmm. way, they don't give up on you. Oh, yeah. No, th well, this is a point that I always like to make is that if you look at the current, that whole list of cars that we just went through with available yeah. manual, uh, manual options is yep. a pretty solid list. For for what for where we are yeah. in in the automotive world right now, yeah. it's a pretty solid list. And if people don't decide to buy those cars, they are going to die. Right. So well, that's 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 true. But I also think that there's there's some external forces that are going to cause the death of cars in general. But external force. Yeah. So like a giant earthquake. Earthquake. What are we talking about? It's like a more like a governmental thing. Oh, uh, not an earthquake. Not an earthquake. <laughs> I mean, I can't speak for California, but. Yeah. I think we'll be okay in New York. <laughs> Maybe we'll, not a tidal wave, but yeah, a tidal wave or tsunami yeah. or something. Anyhow, so I don't know. What you know? Let, let us know what you think. Well, what's the deal? Manual cars necessary to have a driver's experience or not? You know what I mean? Like I think there's plenty of people that will argue that you know some of these cars are so well handled and they handle so well that if you went down to let's say turn you know uh, tail of the dragon or something like that mm -hmm. that you could have a better driving experience with an automatic transmission i bet some people could argue that and i and i would even Pl plenty of people will say that and i would even i would even argue that there's a good chance of that if you did a like with, with a lot of the road race cars and stuff like that some of those cars that just have like those incredible sequential mm -hmm. um transmissions that are you know like you know driven with paddles and stuff like that I think it all depends yeah. on what car you're driving to, obviously. Yeah. So, I agree. Yeah. You know. Anyhow, that's our take. That is. Let us know what you think about this whole manual thing. Cool that they're still offering them. Better driving experience without them. Throw it down below. Happy to hear about it. Don't forget this Friday, piece of content dropping for you. I believe it's a uh, car walk around with uh, Reza Arsham, mm -hmm. uh, USTCC driver. Civic Type R. Civic Type R. Very cool build. It was in our mm -hmm. SEMA booth this year, um, so I think uh, I think that's where we did the walk around. So, yep. so you should have some really cool products that were available, and um, yeah, uh, cool build. Make sure you tune in and check it out. Don't forget to subscribe if you've listened to us this long. Uh, well, you know we deserve it. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that's it. Uh, take care of yourself, and don't forget we go live on Instagram and Facebook uh, right before the podcast, 2 p.m. Eastern every Wednesday. Uh, maybe till, YouTube now too. Maybe YouTube now. Mm -hmm. Anyhow, till next time. Take care.